What up, everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with our probability unit. Today, we're going to be talking about what is probability. So let's take a chance and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to explain how to find the probability of a fair event. Before we get started, we need to take a look at our math vocabulary for this lesson. We have two math vocabulary words. Of course, the first one is probability. What does it mean when we're talking about probability? Probability is how likely an event is to happen. It's using math to look at an experiment or something being done and tell us how likely an event is to happen. So an event is the possible outcomes of an experiment. So let's say you're doing an experiment, you're going to flip a coin, right? And you want to know, okay, what are the possible outcomes? Well, the possible outcomes are heads or tails. So when we're talking about an event, we're talking about the event of the coin landing on heads in the event of the coin landing on tails. Speaking of heads and tails, let's use that example to learn about some probability basics. So here we have a fair nickel. What I mean by fair nickel is one side is heads and one side is tails, right? It's not like the coin that Two-Face uses in Batman where both sides are heads, right? So we wanna flip this coin and figure out, okay, are we gonna land on heads or tails? Well, we can't tell the future, so that's where we bring in probability. Probability is going to help us determine, right, again, going back to our math vocabulary, how likely it's going to be heads and how likely it would land on tails. When you find the probability, you're going to look at the numbers of ways an event can happen and the number of total outcomes. Now, that seems kind of confusing and very wordy, but this is actually very simple. The probability of an event, right, and an event could be landing on heads. So the probability of it landing on heads is the number of ways it can happen over the number of total outcomes. And we're going to write probability as a ratio and typically as a ratio in fraction form, right? So to write this mathematically, okay, we're going to say probability and then the parentheses is the event. So our event is going to be landing on heads. So this literally says probability of landing on heads. And then we can always read the equal sign as is. So the probability of the coin landing on heads is, and we want to write this as a ratio. So the bottom part is pretty easy, right? What are the number of total outcomes? Well, when you flip a coin, it's either going to land on heads or it's going to land on tails. So there's two outcomes. So the denominator of your fraction would be two, okay? Now, what is the number of ways it can happen? Well, there's only one way that it can land on heads. It has to land on heads. So our numerator is going to be one. So the probability of the coin landing on heads is one half. Now, many of you probably already knew that, right? Because you say, okay, there's a 50-50 chance it's going to land on heads. Well, one half is equal to 50%. So there's a 50% chance that this coin, when we flip it, would land on heads. And we can do the same thing. Now we're talking about the probability of it landing on tails. And again, there's only two total outcomes it can either, when you flip it, land on heads or tails. So we're going to make that a 2. And then the numerator is still going to be 1 because there's only one way it can land on tails, right? It has to land on tails, which again is going to be 50%. So there's a 50% chance that it would land on heads, and there's a 50% chance it would land on tails. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about probability, using math to determine how likely it would be that it lands on heads, and how likely it would be that it lands on tails. Let's take a look at some more probability basics. We just talked about how we write probability as ratios, right? And we can write ratios as percents, like we did with the 50%. We can also write it as a decimal. And so here, when we're talking about probability, everything's going to land on a number line from 0 to 1. You can actually assign descriptive words to an event to tell you whether or not it's impossible or likely, or very likely, or certain. So we just did a, an experiment where we were going to flip a coin, right? And we came up that the ratio of the event was 1 half, and we could write that as 50%, or as 0 0.5, right? Because this is a number line, and fractions, percents, and decimals are the same thing. And so the descriptive word we would use for that probability is equally likely. It was equally likely that it landed on heads, and equally likely that it landed on tails. So let's say we flip the coin and we want to know the probability, right, that it would land on a dragon. Okay, 
Well, obviously there's no dragon on this nickel right here. And so we would say that, okay, there are two possible outcomes, heads and tails, and to land on a dragon can't happen, right? Zero of those are a dragon. So we would say that it is impossible, right, to land on a dragon. It can also be unlikely if the rate, if the probability was one fourth or 25%. It could be equally likely like we already talked about. It could be likely, so it could, if the probability was three fourths or 75%, we could say likely. And if it's 100% certain, we would say one or 100%. So all of your probabilities are going to fall on this number line. So if I wanted to flip a coin and I wanted to know, okay, what's the probability that it would land on either heads or tails? Well, that would be two halves because there are two outcomes and there are two different ways it could happen. So we would say that that is a 100% probability that that coin would land on a heads or tails. So that's how we can use our probability written as a ratio or a whole number if it's a fraction equivalent to one, right? or percent and then assign these descriptive words to it. So let's try an I do problem. Sorry, I mean a we do problem. We're gonna make sure this is in your notes. The link to your notes is in the description to the video. So it says Elijah is gonna roll a fair dice. That's numbered one through six. What that means, it's a fair dice. Each side is a different number, right? So they're all gonna have the same chance of being rolled. Find the prob probabilities of the events listed below. So what is the probability of the event that it lands on a one? Okay, well, I know that a dice has six sides and that there's only one way for it to land on a one, so I would say the probability is one six. If I go all the way up here, I know that one six would be less than one fourth, so this is pretty unlikely that it would land on a one. If I was assigning the descriptive term, this one six would probably be somewhere around there. So we could say that it's closer to zero than one fourth, but we still use the word unlikely, right? You can't use impossible until there's a 0% chance. Well, what is the probability of it rolling a two? Okay, well, the same thing. There are six different ways or six different outcomes, and there's only one way for it to get a two. So we would say the probability is one sixth. Now, remember, this is just a prediction, right? Because if you roll a dice three times, it could land on a two every time, right? And now that would be, that would beat the odds, okay? But that's not unusual for anybody who's ever rolled a dice. Sometimes when you're playing Yahtzee, you roll all five dice and you get a Yahtzee, okay? So this is just a prediction of what we think is going to happen based on the mathematics. There's going to be a whole different lesson about doing experiments and experimental probability, but that's going to come later. This is just a prediction. So same thing, and matter of fact, this is gonna be the same thing for all of them. Each side of the dice has a one six probability, right, that it's going to be rolled. And again, we talked about this being a ratio, so really what this is saying is the prediction of what's gonna happen is it will land on a one once for every six times rolled. That takes us back to our ratio lessons, okay? And so again, this isn't one six, this is once for every six times rolled, but we can write ratios as fractions. Now let's take this idea of writing probability and take it to the next level. So our next level problem says Elijah is going to roll a fair dice numbered one through six. Find the probabilities of the events listed below. So same thing, it's a fair dice, okay? But now we want to know the probability of the event that it would land on an even number. So we know the possible outcomes for a dice are one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is actually called your sample space. There gonna be a, there's going to be a lesson on that. But sample space basically is just all the outcomes that are possible, okay? Now, the even numbers, one, two, and three, okay? So if we wanted the probability that it's gonna land on an even number, there are still six outcomes in our sample space, and three of them are even. So we would say the probability of landing on an even number is three six, or that's equal to one half, so we could write it as 50%, or we could write it as 0 0.5, okay? Same thing with the odd. All right, well, there's still six outcomes, and there is one, two, three odd numbers. So our numerator is going to be three, and that's the same thing. There's a 50% chance that it's going to land on an odd number. So sometimes it's not asking you about a specific outcome. It could be grouping them together, such as we did with even and odd. Now, this next one, if we assume that n is a number, okay? So n is going to be a number. We're going to represent that. 
what are the probabilities that it lands on a number that is greater than three? Not equal to three, not greater than or equal to, but greater than three. The numbers greater than three are four, five, and six. So what we're saying is if you roll at that dice, there's a 50% chance that the number you land on will be greater than three. Let's do the same thing with this one. So what's the probability that the number you land on is less than four? So again, not equal to in less than four, just less than four. So that'd be three, two, or one. So if you roll a dice, there's a 50% chance that you're gonna land on a number that is less than four. Sometimes they group numbers together. So what's the probability that the dice is gonna land on a one, three, five, or six? Well, you know that there are still six outcomes that could be based on the sample space we wrote down. And we have four different ways that it could land on a one, three, five, or six. So we're going to say the probability is four out of six, or you could say two out of three, right? For every three rolls you do, two of them should land on one, three, five, or six. So again, what we're doing for this one is we're talking about the probability of different outcomes happening and grouping them together. Let's try a you try problem. So our you try problem says Madeline's going to pick a marble out of the bag that has four blue marbles, three red marbles, and two yellow marbles. Find the probabilities of the events listed below. So go ahead and pause the video, do this work on your notes, and then push play to check your understanding. Hopefully you just paused it and now you're checking your work. So the probability that she picks out a blue marble, and again, she's doing this randomly, okay, that should uh, be assumed for this lesson, but I should have said it, um, that she picks a blue marble. First of all, you need to figure out, okay, what are all the different total outcomes? She has four blue marbles, three red marbles, and two yellow marbles. So, so there are nine different outcomes, and some of them are the same outcome, right? If it, landed on blue, or some of them would be the uh, same event, but there are still nine marbles in the bag, all right? And if you were looking at how many ways it could land on blue, well, there are four different possible ways she could pick a blue marble. So the probability for blue is four ninths. The probability for red, again, the denominator is still the same because there's nine total outcomes that it could be. And there are three red marbles in there. So the probability is three ninths, or you could simplify that down to one third. Okay, and you could even write that as a percent, 33.3%. 3 you can truncate it, you don't have to keep doing the repeated decimal. Probability for yellow, again, there are nine different outcomes, and there are two different ways it could be yellow. She could pick either one of the yellow marbles, and so the probability that it would land on yellow would be two ninths. And our last one says, what's the probability that it lands on either blue or yellow? Okay, so again, there's still nine outcomes. There are four blue and two yellow, which makes six different ways that if she picked a marble out of the bag, it could be blue or yellow. And you can simplify this down to two thirds, right? So you could do 66.66% uh, .66 there. Um, I never like to write three sixes. And you could use it as a percent or think about it as a ratio. And again, I know I've said this a lot, but what I'm tr really trying to hit home is what you're doing when you're finding the probability, what you're really saying is, is if she had a bag with four marbles, or sorry, four blue marbles, three red marbles, two yellow marbles, and she randomly picked a marble out of the bag, there's a 66.66% chance that that marble would either be blue or yellow. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there are a lot of different options online and we really appreciate you spending your time with us. If you have not already, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you join our Instruct Beats family on all the social media accounts. Again, thank you so much. Instruct Beats, out.